So there's a few different versions of the Model 3. You have the Model 3 Long Range, the Model 3 Standard Range, Standard Range Plus, Mid Range, Performance. You might wonder what the differences are. Well, this is a uh, Model 3 uh, Mid Range. It's kind of a little bit more of a rarer Tesla model. So when the Model 3 first came out in 2017, um, it was pretty limited production. Uh, they didn't make a ton of Model 3s uh, in 2017 when they first came out. But in 2018, Tesla really started cranking out uh, Model 3s, uh, Model 3 production. So probably uh, most of the mid-range Model 3s you'll find will be 2018. As far as I know, they did not offer a mid-range version of the Model 3 for 2019. I think uh, what happened is that they actually uh, did away with the mid-range model and in 2019 uh, they replaced it with a standard range and standard range plus. I actually own a 2019 uh, Model 3 standard range plus myself. Great vehicle. So I, you know, the biggest difference, <laughs> I guess really the only difference between a, uh, a mid-range and a long range is the size of the battery. So the long range uh, Model 3 has a larger battery pack so to compare it in fact, we have a 2018 Model 3 long range, so if you want to compare an 18 long range versus a mid range, right around the time of making this video, we have uh, two of the same models in stock. So a Model 3 uh, long range has a fully charged range, EP rated about 320 miles. A Model 3 mid range has an EPA rating fully charged of about 260 miles. So that's the difference. The long range has a bigger battery pack. Um, performance, the uh, the Model 3 long range goes 0 to 60 a few tenths of a second faster than the mid range. I think the 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds versus like 5.4 seconds for the mid range. Not a huge difference. This is still pretty quick. Um, so the rest of the vehicle uh, is pretty much the same. Uh, this has a, a full premium interior just like the Model 3 long range where I have a standard range uh, plus uh, Model 3 and that one has a partial premium interior, so I don't have the full premium interior like this one I think the biggest differences between a premium interior and a partial premium interior is the stereo system in the automatic garage door opener Pretty sure this one should have a uh, automatic garage door opener if it doesn't uh, Tesla can install one for you But uh, for me, <laughs> I'm kind of an audio audiophile So the one thing that kind of disappoints me a little bit versus my uh, standard range plus Model 3 versus the mid-range is a stereo system. This has the premium stereo system from the long range, so it has a subwoofer. Mine doesn't have a subwoofer, and I can tell you having a subwoofer really makes a big difference in the audio quality, especially if you like bass. I play bass guitar, so I like bass, so uh, there's definitely a noticeable difference in the sound quality, especially in the lower end with uh, the Model 3 uh, premium into uh, uh, you know premium stereo system versus just kind of the standard stereo system and the other thing I know I don't know if this is hundred percent true but uh, on the standard range plus is they do have speakers but they're not connected uh, but this speaker should work when you have the full premium sound system I don't know if that's hundred percent true I think it might be I was actually doing research and <laughs> I, I was so annoyed by it I was actually seeing if I could upgrade my stereo system and my standard range to the premium one. I don't know if it's that easy, uh, but there you go. Okay, so we took this one in on trade. It's a um, uh, clean Carfax vehicle, local vehicle from Washington. It has uh, 38,849 miles at the time of making this video. If you're looking for a battery electric vehicle, I think the Model 3 is a great choice. I think it's one of the best battery electric vehicles out there. Uh, I'll even go further than that. I think it's one of the best cars on the road. Uh, that's one reason why I decided to buy one. I love cars. I have gas cars. I have an Infiniti. I've owned multiple Infinities. I've owned lots of different cars in my lifetime. Uh, I've been in the car business my whole entire life. I'm 42. I've been in it since I was 15. When I first started driving Teslas, they blew my mind. And uh, as a used car manager, we deal in a lot of pre-owned Teslas because I like Teslas. So we've probably have had over 100 come and gone through our store. So I've had an experience to drive them. And uh, it's really quite amazing. Um, the way I analogize it is like when the when the iPhone first came out, and then you had you know flip phones and stuff like that. Then the iPhone came out, and that became the new form factor of phones. Basically, everyone you know copied the iPhone. I think Tesla is on to something. You know, maybe it's just me, but after experiencing this amazing user interface, which is like an iPad, how connected you are to this vehicle, the amazing mobile app. Uh, I'm connected to my car in a way I've never thought I could be uh, with this amazing Tesla app. Um, you can see here, 
This is it right here. You can see your vehicle. You can see the specs and warranty that's left on it. You know, this has the midnight silver metallic paint, premium interior, 19 inch sport wheels, mid range rear wheel drive, uh, black and white premium interior. It tells you how much warranty is left on it. The bumper to bumper warranty uh, uh, expires in March of uh, 2023. So it actually has a good amount of warranty left on it. And then the battery and drive units, those have warranty till 2027, 100,000 miles. Um, when you charge the vehicle at your house, you can pull up charge stats. You can see how much money you're saving versus gas. Um, if someone else is driving your vehicle, you can see where they are. You can see how fast they're going. Uh, you can use your app to find <laughs> uh, nearby supercharging. You can also use a screen too, uh, right there to find supercharging. Um, my favorite thing is when I get out of the shower and my car's all frosty, I can go to the climate control and I can put it on, I can put the heated heats on, or I can even just hit the frost car and it'll put everything on and my car will be completely defrosted by the time I go out to it. So there you have it. I mean, that's just a drop in the bucket. And I think kind of like uh, once you get used to your smartphone, it's kind of hard to go back to a flip phone. Once you get used to this amazing user interface, the Tesla app, um, I think it's going to be hard to go back to a regular car. And stuff like this. Uh, this was an over year update about a year ago. This car was out for years and it didn't have a blind spot camera. But one day Tesla gave it an over their update and they found a way to activate the cameras when you put on the turn signal uh, in the fenders. And now you have blind spot cameras. Uh, the whole user interface is basically redesigned and updated. Uh, they've added, uh, you know, TikTok, YouTube. Um, they've added video games. They've added uh, features like a colorizer. So even though this is a vehicle that's getting older, in a lot of ways, it's getting better. It's improving with age because of these over their updates. And uh, the cool thing about it is you don't have to have the latest and greatest Tesla. You don't have to buy a 23 Model 3 to take advantage of, you know, the user interface. It really, you know, this display looks pretty much the same as a 2023 Tesla. They may have a newer, faster processor in it, but the functionality is very similar. Um, so it's just like, you know, you don't have to buy a brand new iPhone. You can still buy an iPhone that's two or three years old and you can, you know, run the same apps on it and it's going to look pretty much the same and function pretty much the same way as a new iPhone. So, uh, really great cameras and then the backup cameras are really nice too. You have uh, the rear camera, then you have these repeater cameras in the side. I can go on and on about talking about this car. I could probably talk an hour about it. <laughs> so Tesla, they've been making a... Uh, They've been making electric cars uh, pretty much longer than anybody. They came out with a Tesla Road, Roadster in 2008, 2009. They came out with a Model S in 2012. Uh, so they have a lot of experience with, uh, you know, thermal management, battery management, making battery packs, uh, the software to, you know, make the vehicle function and stuff. And I think, uh, you know, it's just my opinion, but I think they're far ahead of everyone else. Interior space is pretty good, uh, even though this is a compact vehicle uh, and it's similar in size to, you know, gas-powered vehicles. Uh, it does have more interior space because there's no gas engine since the floor is completely flat. allows for more interior space. Likewise, when we look in the trunk, the trunk's pretty big. <laughs> then you have even more storage under there because you normally you'd have a gas tank there, but there's no gas tank in this car. It has batteries. And the batteries uh, make it safe and they make it perform better because the batteries do weigh a lot, but most of that weight is only about a foot off the ground. So it's like an anchor. It's like a keel on a bolt, keeping this car locked to the ground. Uh, so handling uh, is very sports car-like. Uh, there's very little body roll. Uh, Safety-wise, this is probably one of the lowest rollover risks out of any vehicle. In fact, when the NHTSA tested the Model 3, it's the safest vehicle ever tested by the NHTSA, pretty much by every metric. You have more space up here. There's also a safety feature, no engine here, so you have a crumple zone 60% bigger than on a gas car. Really nice looking, and that's the other thing too, even though this is a 2018, really doesn't look that different than the 2022 or 2023 Model uh, 3. You'd have to be a real Tesla expert to tell the difference, or a Tespert, <laughs> uh, you know, so. There you have it, uh, one awesome battery electric vehicle. And the other thing I'd like to uh, mention too, uh, you know, yikes. The other thing I'd like to mention too, is that you're not just gonna save money on gas, you're gonna save money on maintenance. 
you know, a gas car has thousands of moving thousands of moving parts. This has dozens. Brakes usually last well over 100,000 miles. You know, brakes can be expensive. Sometimes it's a thousand, two thousand dollars to replace brakes in a car. What about scheduled services? The 30k or the big 60k, 90k service, uh, changing spark plugs, uh, transmission service, transmission flush, coolant flush. You know, you're not going to be doing that stuff with this car. You're not changing spark plugs. Uh, <laughs> there's really no transmission to go bad. It just has one speed transmission. Uh, it doesn't have a complex, you know, 10 speed transmission. Uh, it doesn't have tons of sensors. It doesn't have like a, you know, high pressure fuel, uh, you know, f fuel module. It doesn't have, <laughs> doesn't have emission control systems that can have problems. It doesn't have catalytic converters. It doesn't have timing belts that can break. I can go on and on and on. Obviously things do go wrong with them every once in a while. It's just like anything. But in my opinion, I think uh, the, the incidences of, uh, of uh, things breaking seem to be lower, you know, just with my experience servicing and putting these through the shop. Uh, the reason why I like Teslas as a used car manager is that, you know, they're pretty easy to get through service. They really don't need much as far as service goes, you know, it's just usually tires, <laughs> tires, or maybe we have to play, replace the in-cabin filter because it there's a there's an odor from pets or something like that. But aside from that, they're fairly low maintenance. Uh, thanks for taking so much time today to watch this video. Hopefully see you soon and have a wonderful day.